Why do we honor the Virgin Mary? Let me ask you, why do we honor her? Why do you think? Mary, you have her name. You bear her name. You just went to Crossroad. You know it all, baby, right? Oh, yes, you do. You do. Why? Why do we do that? Because Mary, in a certain sense, is the icon, the image, if you will, of what it means to be a perfect disciple of Jesus Christ, of the one true and living God. So as you know, the archangel Gabriel came to her and made an announcement to her that she would bear a son, that that son would be Jesus, that that son would be the savior of the world. And we even have that now depicted in our iconography up above. So you see that every time that you come into the church. And Mary, Mary's response was, and she was a teenager, just like you are. Mary's response was, Lord, let it be done to me now according to your word. In other words, she accepted God's will for her life. She heard her vocation, and she followed it through to the end. And that's what every Christian is called to do. Every Christian, male, female, who bear the name of Mary, who bear the name of Cristo, it doesn't matter. All of us as Christians are called to have our vocation announced to us, and then we follow it to the end. But why do we celebrate today especially? This is a huge feast throughout the Orthodox world. In Greece right now, right, Mrs. Catalanos? People have left the cities, they're going out and they're celebrating. And liturgy's been over since seven o'clock in the morning. Especially on the island of Tinos, where people, to venerate the icon, climb up on their knees to get to the church to venerate the icon. Why do we do this? Why do we do these things to honor Mary? Well, you can see the icon up here, and you know that this icon celebrates something we could not possibly celebrate were it not for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The icon there depicts, in fact, Mary's funeral. It depicts her funeral. Now, why? Because this icon teaches us about life and death and life after death, so that for us, when we see this icon, we know what it means to die and to be embraced by Christ. Because if you look at the icon carefully, and I hope all of you have that opportunity before you leave today, you can see that Mary is laid out in a funeral bier. She's laid out in a coffin. Just like when someone dies here, we bring their casket to the church and we lay them out here in the church. And if you look carefully at the icon, Mary is surrounded by her mourners, the apostles, some bishops, the angels. But more than that, the risen Christ is depicted in this icon. And he is standing above her funeral bier. And he is holding in his arms a small child, an infant, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And in the symbolism of our iconography, that small child wrapped in swaddling clothes, that newborn infant, is the soul of Mary. Which means that for us as Christians and as believers, death is not the end. And not only is it not the end, but it's a completely new beginning. It is starting over again, but this time for eternity in the arms of Jesus Christ, which is where all of us want to be. So this is a celebration in a certain sense of our immortality, of the fact that no one sitting here today is an ordinary person. You're all created to be immortal, to live forever. In fact, you've never looked into the eyes of anyone that is not destined one way or the other for immortality. In that sense, we are having been created in the image and likeness of God, we are his living, walking, talking, breathing icons. And that continues, not just simply in this life, but in the next life as well, when he embraces us and calls us to himself to make us again who we truly are for eternity. Good morning, everybody.